So I did a little bit of research on the numerology of 2013. It's not going to get better. <laughs> Sorry. Now, when I was online, there are so many predictions out there, and I don't want to be delivering predictions. So what I did was I just put a collection of things that I heard from George, read from George, and then some of the other stuff that I found online. So 2013 comes out to a six. So numerology-wise, and I don't want to get into this, but you're supposed to find your sun number. Is that something for me? Your Starbucks cup. You want me to remove it? <laughs> I want everyone to know I drink Starbucks. Me and Gibbs. <laughs> so for those of you who are unaware of this, we've been videotaping the workshops and posting them on YouTube now. Mm -hmm. So this will also go up on YouTube. So Mark is trying to keep it so we're not advertising anyone, but I don't mind advertising. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to send gift cards. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We also need a new microphone. <laughs> um, so 2013, if you were to find out the best way this year is going to work for you, you're supposed to add your number to the number six and then whatever that number comes out to. So obviously everyone's going to have different numbers. So I decided to just keep the number six for the year and see how this unfolds. So the first thing I came up with that um, number six is the number that gets along with all the other numbers. So numerology wise, if you're a six, you're a person who gets along with everyone. You have very few enemies. So who's a six in here? We should just check it out. You are? You can't be a six. I'm kidding. <laughs> I get along with everyone. <laughs> Um, the numerology <laughs> process is, let's see, so Judy, what was your birthday? My birthday? Well, I hope you know that, yes. yes. <laughs> the year? You, the month, what month? January. So that's a one, the day? 31. 31, so that's a four, so you're a ten, which is a one. So your personal number is a one. Yeah, you're, can you, you're one, all right. You're number <laughs> one! <laughs> so can you also figure that out for your name as well? You can do it for your, your name as well. Your name is your birth number, and the birthday mm -hmm. number is a different kind of number. I don't remember what it is, if it's called the soul number or something. But your name also works out, so letters represent certain things. So Judy, so that's a, a J is a one, U is a three, so that's a four, D is a three. No, D is a four, right? So there's an eight, and Y is... An eight again, so it's sixteen, so seven. So your first name is a seven, and Warman is your last name. Yes. So it's a W. So W is a four. O is a six, so it's a ten. R, drop it, that's a nine. M is a four, so that's a fourteen. A is a one, that's a fifteen. N is a five, that's a twenty, so that's a two. So what was your first one? A seven. Yes. So you're a nine. So your birth name is a nine. So you're a nine and a one. That's what you're, so you usually go with your name first and then the date. So you're predominantly a nine and then you're a one, which actually is quite amazing because you're on both scales. It's a, it's a cycle of nine. I've been told that more than This is Judy, either here or here. So one is the beginning and nine is the completion. So that's actually a full cycle, which is good. So one is the initiating force. So be nice over here. here? <laughs> so, no. so on the birthday when you're adding up everything, you drop the nine? The nine and the I, uh, so an I and an R, those are the number nines. And whenever you add a nine to a number, it always adds up to me. So if you take a two and a nine, put it together, it's an 11, that comes to a two. Three and a nine is a 12, comes to a three. So you always just drop the nine, it just doesn't. If you want the total number, if you want to just know what your number is, that's fine. But when you're doing a quick add, just drop the nine. So that's just the I and the R's. You never have to add those. So anyway, for 19, uh, for 2019, 2013, you would add your 9 to the 6. So this is a 15, which is a 6. So you actually would work really well with this year. So this year would resonate Thank with you. Thank God. Cheers for you. <laughs> <laughs> so this year, everyone loves Judy. <laughs> hey, it's the year of the Judy. <laughs> here, come on up here. You do this then. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. As an individual, as I said, sixes, they're loving, they're caring, they're responsible, they're warm, they're humane, and they're compassionate. Um, then this directs, and then most of their energy directs to small, close-knit groups, family, communities, and friends. So I would say that six would resonate with you quite well. So you're very tight-knit. Very, it's very close. And this can also be a contradiction because 
uh, you are, have a tendency to be overproductive when it comes to anybody in your circle if they're being affected. You tend to meddle in other people's affairs and is gullible in all the wrong ways. <laughs> are you gullible? <laughs> yes. Um, it does say that six is the most positive, and as I said, it gets along with all the other numbers. So six is the amiable number. Everyone gets along well with a six. So this year, if you want to, now that's an individual number, if you want to look at the year, the six is the year that has, a, I would say, hopefully, that we start learning how to get along with each other. In the nine-year cycle that lasted from 2008 to 2017, there's been a lot of dramatic um, different things that have occurred that have not occurred in any of the other nine-year cycles. One of the things that I researched, I found this quite intriguing, from the year zero to 999, the first millennium, the universe, all the people on the planet, did not share a common number. I mean, there may have been hundreds of people who had the same number in their birth date, but they didn't share a common number. From, nine, from 1,000, to 1999, everybody had the number one. You were either born in 1001, 1002, 1963, 1964. So you had, at least had one, a number one. So for a thousand years, everybody had the number one in their birth number. Now, the year 2000, the next millennium, everyone's going to have the number two in their birth. And the way that they introduce it, it's kind of like adding salt to a stew. It doesn't make much of a difference, but it has some difference in there. So I found it very intriguing that from this moment on, everyone on the planet is going to have the number two in their birth number. And this is a little difficult because number twos have a tendency to be negative. Um, they have a, it's a negative number. Number one is awfully, often considered the initiating force. Number two is far reserved. So it would also be considered the... Um, opposing force to what's happening. But you need both one and two to achieve to the three. That's necessary. So anyway, that was just a side note there. When um, in one of the researches um, I did, what they talked about was in the last millennium, um, it's hard to recognize the changes. It's kind of like watching a clock. You don't really see it, but you know the time changes. And sometimes when you stare at a clock, it takes longer. <laughs> so it's better to look away. So you, it's not, almost like we turn around and something else has changed. And as most of us probably are aware of, the time seems to be going faster. Is anybody else is feeling that? Yeah. It's like we're just flying by. So that's the acceleration of this next level of the cycle of nines that we're in. Um, there's extreme fronts that we have, religious, economic, political, environmental. There's the divide and conquer philosophy that's been happening on the planet lately, the divide and conquer. I mean, every time you turn around, there's another war happening in the Middle East somewhere. Somebody's upset. Some, and it's not just restricted to the Middle East now. It's spreading over to all parts of Africa as well. Egypt is fighting. So it's spreading throughout. It's spreading. And, of course, in the United States, we have wars. It's just a different type of war. But we have wars here as well. So the divide and conquer, of course, obviously, we're seeing a large separation of the classes as well that's beginning to occur here. So... Um, one of the things that we, it said is that we're doing this to ourselves. And in history, um, everyone's going to be affected by the force of separation. And that's what happens with the six. With technology, it's causing separation. I mean, how many times do you call and you don't talk to a person anymore? We talk, you don't even have to call. Just to go online. I mean, you can do your banking online. You can do your shopping online. <coughs> um, my brother told me, I think it was my brother that told me this joke. I'm not sure. But he said there was a cartoon that when the internet went down, the two roommates that had been living together for years looked up and the woman said, oh my God, you're black. And he said, oh my God, you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> They've been living together for year and years, but they didn't know because it was all social connection. Yeah. So with that, as the increase of technology, we're losing our personal touch. Yeah. We're losing our ability to relate to individuals. I'm very curious to find out what happens because everything has a rise and a fall and ebb and a flow. So technology is going to peak out and crash, I think, one day. And what it does, I'm very curious to find out how we're going to communicate. I mean, it may not happen in my lifetime, but I think about my granddaughter. She's 16 years old. She texts and talks on the phone at the same time. That's amazing to me, but that's what she does. Facebooking is all, it's all about Facebooking. And now this is uh, intriguing as well. So I have a grandchild who's um, uh, uh, mentally retarded. That's what they're calling it, slight mentally But she has a Facebook page. Even a retarded child, and I'm not trying to be 
dissing anyone, but with her limited capacity, she still understands the importance of Facebook. She, I mean, reading her posts is kind of funny because you know she she's like, I went to school today. <laughs> okay, that's nice, but that's what she posts. But she gets the idea that Facebooking is what you do. That's her friends. Oh, look, I have 13 friends, but in real life, she has one friend and that's it. But on Facebooking, she's got tons of friends. So that's her way to connect. So what happens when that breaks down? How is she going to connect with individuals? Uh, that, I'm going off on another subject, I know, but I'm just aware that the technology is increasing. Um, it's also, um, when I think about this as a new year cycle, let me just stick with that I wrote here. With a nine year cycle, six puts us over the hump. So not one to nine, five is in the middle, but six gets us over. So we're now on the, the acceleration part of this cycle. So things are actually going to start happening faster. So they're set. Again, I don't want to do premonitions. I don't want to give you, uh, what is that, uh, predictions. I, I'm just giving you what it states for the number. Um, the world is getting smaller, actually. If you think about this, the world is getting smaller. Overpopulation. We're soon going to start having um, a problem with food. So that's why genetic engineering is starting to increase. So manufacture food instead of have organic um, food. Uh, we can fly across the country. You can fly around the world, as a matter of fact, in a few hours. Think about this when we were little. When I was little. 1963. Born in 1963. The big tragedy, JFK gets killed. Globally, everyone hears that, but you know, after a while, it passes, and then whatever's happening in the day-to-day -day world, not many people hear it. But today, an event can happen, it's on the internet, boom, everybody knows about it in a second. If you, I mean, just imagine. And think of all the people who have come to success because of the internet. Uh, I can't tell you, but I know there's a number of singers who just post YouTube videos, and that just goes viral, and that's it, Every, and then that, they become famous. So you don't even need a record company anymore. You can just do it on YouTube. So not only does it enhance us, it connects us more. So the positive side of that is we are actually connected worldwide. We are connected all the way around the world. So what's happening in Africa, I can feel it. What happened in Connecticut, everybody in the world felt it. So it wasn't just localized now, we are connected as one. Now with that, there's a downfall to that as well because we can manipulate those powers that can be, can manipulate and guide and lead individuals into a certain thing. On the internet, you can publish anything, and people take it as truth and fact. So we have to be careful about that as well. So um, some of the other things that are happening is, I said this, an increase in, in the world population, global warming, which I think finally everybody agrees is happening. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We had to argue for years that global warming is happening. Oh yeah, by the way, it's getting hotter here. <laughs> Uh, genetic engineering, I said, consumption of food, waste disposal. I mean, what's going on? Where are we putting our waste? I saw um, a video yesterday where they were talking about how, I think it's a beach in Oregon, where somehow because of the tides, all of the plastics that are out in the ocean are showing up on the beaches. And the animals are ingesting that, and they're, in, they're toxins. And they said that some of the plastics are actually so micro-sized that if you're on the beach having a picnic, you're inhaling it if there's a breeze. So we're being infected by that as well. So that's all the consumption. Again, the food waste disposal, disease is increasing, and then of course the weather disasters. To my knowledge, I've never seen the world be in so much devastation within the last four or five years. We had Katrina, we had Superstorm Sandy, um, the earthquakes that are occurring. Mm -hmm. The tsunamis, we had two tsunamis within the last 10 years as well. So that's increasing. In my lifehood, we've had more natural disasters within the last four or five years than we've had in 45 years, 50 years. So to me, that's another sign. Now, according to George, oh, one other thing I should also mention. Since everything's accelerating, we also have to remember that as a human being, my potential accelerates as well. My potential for compassion my potential for understanding, for peace. Naturally, because we're connected worldwide, one of the benefits when there's a, tra a tragedy, there's an outpouring of, of, of support. The people from Katrina are up helping the people in Sandy. I mean, so there's the superstorm Sandy. So there's an outreach of compassion now. So not just because I can see tragedy, but I also can feel and reach towards you. One of the articles that really caught me 
For those of you who don't know, I, I published this in the newsletter. I just returned from a 10-day silent retreat. It was on meditation, and you were completely cut off from the world. No phones, no internets, no books. You didn't even have anything to journal on. You weren't allowed to have a piece of paper or a pen. All you did was meditate. Now, I first thought you think, oh, what's that going to do? Benefit to you sit on your butt and meditate. First of all, it really hurts. <laughs> 11 hours a day, <laughs> starting at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> but what I felt was a, a tremendous sense of peace and compassion, too. I mean, that really. And so the first thing I'm hit with, the Connecticut shooting. I have family in Connecticut. And then, of course, those of you who know me, I'm so attached to children. And then as I learned, kindergartners, ah, I'm like crying all the way home. They're just like, you want me to drive? No, I'm okay. And then I find out, you know, even more tragedy. The kids are shot multiple times. So obviously this gentleman had a lot of rage. Well, you have to have a lot of rage to shoot children. <laughs> anyway, I'm off the subject here. But because of that event, look at all the, compa the compassion that has surrounded the world today. Just people are connected to that. So... With the tragedy, we also have the potential to accelerate as well. That's something to look, look forward to. But those of you who understand philosophy and rhythm, we also know that every rise, there's going to be a fall. For every fall, there'll be a rise. For us to accelerate, we have to have something to accelerate from. So tragedy, so we can rise above the tragedy. So unfortunately, <coughs> it looks like that number six brings about more tragedy. However, because things are accelerating, I suspect that we'll be able to overcome them quickly, as opposed to the past. Like wars, you think about World War I. How long did that last? Five, 10, 15 years? The last war that we were in, two, three years? I mean, that's a terrible example, but it is a good picture of how fast we're accelerating on accomplishing things or getting things faster. I saw today, or yesterday, I saw that um, one of the things from 2012 was there was a cure for cancer or detection for cancer that was developed by a nine-year-old boy in Boston. I think it was in Boston. But that's just amazing to me that the younger generation is actually making breakthroughs. I also saw that, um, I forgot the name of the organization. I want to call it, what's the science org? Not NASA. Oh, maybe it was NASA. They gave away a grant and funding, and it was given to a girl who was 13 years old who figured out how to purify water, simply, so everyone can have natural, pure water wherever they are. Simple, little, and 13 years old. So to me, that moves me to think that our younger generation is accelerating in not their thought forms. And I also know that since they're twos, it seems like they're a lot more conscious of the planet than we were as a generation. I know the hippies, like my parents, weren't really in the hippie age, but I mean they were, but they weren't the hippies. You know, the hippies, you have the hippies or the stiffs, my parents were the stiffs. So, but the hippies were all about planet, love, and peace, but they really didn't make a good contribution, where today it looks like, at a younger level, our children are trying to fix the planet and make a contribution. And that moves me. So again, that's an acceleration um, in our um, growth process as a human being. Now George, what his numbers, what he did is, uh, he went through the biblical, Biblical geometria, and I did not have a chance to research this, but I know what he came up with. He said six is the number of soil and temporal things, which is a human being. He said that if you think about this in the Bible, six days were spent to organize the planet. On the sixth day, the human being was formed from soil. The law of the Sabbath symbolizes a lifetime, six days of work, one day of rest. So that's in the Bible. And then he also said if you think about six, it governs the physical limits. For example, a 12-inch ruler is 2 times 6. The 18-inch cubit is 3 times 6. The 36-inch yard, 6 times 6. The 528 feet in one mile is 880 times 6. A circle spans 360 degrees, which is 60 times 6. So physically, we are tied to the number 6. Human beings seem to be in the physical realm. In the linear as well. Our time is the same thing. There are 24 hours in a day, 4 times 6. The days and nights are separated into 12 hours. 12 hours for the day, 12 hours for the night, 2 times 6. The months in a year is 12, 2 times 6. Hours in a minute, I'm sorry, yeah, the hour is 60 minutes, minutes in an hour, that's 6 times 10. Seconds in a minute, 60 seconds, 6 times 10. 
So our time is even connected to the number six. So we as a human being respond to six, it appears, more than we respond to any other number. Now, what had me thinking, I started thinking about the color meditation. So you're aware, many of you are aware of the electromagnetic spectrum that we have here, and then we go to where it says the visible light. This is where we exist. If you take white light and throw it through a prism, what do we get? A rainbow. The rainbow is seven colors, and ancient Ageless wisdom speaks that the seven levels, seven levels of the human being correlate to the seven levels of the color, of the rainbow. So when I think about the color meditation, it puts us in touch with all the different beings, all the different levels that the human being has. Since I am a Tamso, Tamso, some total, a CMD Starbucks. One moment, please. <laughs> wow, I should do the numbers to see if Starbucks comes out to a six. <laughs> so that's a one, a two, a one. I won't do it yet. It comes out to an eight. It does? No, it's just two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, shit, I'm an eight. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. <laughs> when we do the color meditation, we're in touch with every level from our being, from human being to divine. And to master the color meditation is to master or connect with ourselves on many different levels. So basically, everyone remembers the red physical, that's the lowest level of me, which we're talking about six, so it would seem like six would be the lowest part of me. But if we think about the whole sum of the color meditation, it talks about spiritual energy. Now, I'm not talking about woo-woo. Well, I mean, science even confirms that everything vibrates. Everything is energy. This a podium is energy. It's just very slow. It's a piece of paper, energy, it's very slow. Air, energy, we can't see it, it's there. The, my voice is energy. You are hearing because of the vibration of the sounds that I'm making. Your ear is receiving energy. All of this is tied into energy. We see because of energy. So everything is energy. Science says that. So if we think about spiritual energy, that's the kind of essence that we can't quite put our finger on, but we know it's there. It's that spiritual energy, maybe if you want to draw it on the word compassion or intuition or understanding or peace, tranquility. Those are all energy of a higher vibration. They're less dense than this physical body that we have. So when it comes to the spiritual energy, when we do the color meditation, it causes us to advance, to expand, to strive for achievement. Look, I just got a confirmation. <laughs> Spiritual energy inspires us to serve others. It causes us to think inclusively and universally. Tell Marla I said hi. Go ahead and answer it. <laughs> Spiritual energy inspires us towards great understanding, towards higher consciousness, greater love, beauty, and joy. Now, all energy creates action. So whenever you have energy, it's in motion. So all energy creates action. All energy streams from the higher realms, which is to say from the soul, the innermost core of our being. Energy always has a purpose. energy has a purpose. So one way to increase your spiritual energy is to visualize the rainbow. Now, what I did was I wrote down the seven levels just to remind us. Red is physical. And this, of course, ref, uh, refers to our five senses. Our sight, sound, hearing, smell, and touch. You could also put in the sixth sense that George had, like intuition. You put that in. Um, uh, common sense was another one that George would mention. Orange is emotional. emotional. Of course, this refers to our emotions. Um, a little bit higher than our reactions. We often like to say emotions and feelings, like feelings would be the higher level of emotions. Then yellow is mental, this refers to our thinking, not like you're psychotic, but our thoughts. So if you start practicing on the yellow level, you start clearing your mind and having pure thinking, pure thoughts, which is um, a lot of the gurus practice on that. 
one of the tasks at this meditation that I went through for 10 days was to learn how to control your mind. And the teacher was very funny. He said, we all have monkey minds. I'm actually going to do a workshop on this one day. How, have you ever tried to follow the thoughts of your mind? It's like just going from branch to branch to branch to branch. You make no sense. And if you try to put it down in a book, you'd be so confused. And he said, some people can't even follow their own thoughts. That's how confusing. So I have this technique. One of the ways I survived through childhood was to replay movies in my mind that I had already seen. And for those of you who know, I have a pretty good memory. So in this meditation class, I was watching movies in my mind, you know, Miss Congeniality. I'm sitting there laughing because I'm watching scenes. Like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be meditating. <laughs> so one of the things that you had to practice was to learn how to control your mind. A very difficult task. Far more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So that was, um, I did not succeed on that one. I would love to tell you go 10 days and you got control of your mind, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um, that was mental. Then green is intuition. This refers to our higher senses now. Then yellow, I'm sorry, blue is admin. This refers to our highest form of love. Purple is monad, the discovery of oneness, self, oneness in all things, and violet is divine. So purple is the sixth color. And this is why I went to the color meditation. Purple is the sixth color, which is monad. That's to identify, to become aware of the oneness that we all have, that we are all are connected. And I find this very curious, because it seems like that's what's happening on the planet. We are feeling connected. With the internet, with everything that's around, we feel connected to other individuals. So it's not so much I have to find out what's happening, it's more like, oh, wow, somebody's ex experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing on the other end of the planet. And we feel connected. So our diversity is starting to disappear because we find our oneness with one another. And that's number six. So this year is the potential to find out. Sorry, I'm going to stay. If I could sit for 11 hours and not move, I could certainly <laughs> stand and not move. <laughs> so it is our oneness. Still look very strange on the Hi. It's our oneness. <laughs> I want to get a drink. How's that? Did we lose it? Okay, so it is our oneness that um, we feel connected. Since this year is a six, I can't help but wonder discover if we'll really discover our oneness. Um, when I, with a click of the button, I did this this morning. I went on the internet, and with one click of the button, you can go to a story that shows you what everyone did last year for New Year's, New Year's Eve, last night, excuse me. So I saw the festivities in New York. It also stated that in the capital of California, at midnight fireworks show was canceled after a fight at Sacramento restaurant where two people were fatally shot and three were wounded. So right now I have information about Sacramento. I'm not even there, but I know what happened. Then I have um, 300 Nevada National Guard troops kept the night peaceful with only 13 people arrested. Apparently that's a big thing. Only 13 people were arrested there. In Myanmar, and as a matter of fact, another click, I went online and found out that's actually Burma. <laughs> See, I had information at the tip of my hand. So, um, that 90,000 people gathered in a field to watch a countdown for the very first time in the, in the history of the country. So there's a celebration. I think, wow, people got to watch a countdown. That, not like it's never happened. New Year's changes every year. But people actually got to watch a countdown on that one. Then um, in the United Arab in the, Emirates in, in Dubai, a multicolored multi fireworks danced up and down the world's tallest building. For those of you who don't know, the tallest building is in Dubai. And I'm not even going to try to say the name, Burji Karaba Fiya, which just essentially means tall building. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't know what it means. <laughs> it has a golf course on top. No, it's a Starbucks. A Starbucks on top? <laughs> Starbucks and then go skydiving off of that. That would be helpful. <laughs> I guess it would be called skydiving, would it? Well, yeah, that height it probably would be. Um, in Rome, Pope Benedict the 16th celebrated with the Vespers service in St. Peter's Basilica to give thanks for 2012 and to look ahead for 2013. What's the Vespers? The Vespers is the clothes he wears. I don't know. <laughs> Click a button and you'll find out. Prayers. Is that what it is? Prayers. Uh, in Russia, I lost myself. <laughs> I lost myself in Russia. <laughs> Am 
on. You know the yellow light for um, the battery, so it might be need to be changed the battery out. They were full. How's that? Okay, thank you. In Russia, Russia, spectators filled Moscow's Red Square as fireworks exploded near the Kremlin. In Rio de Janeiro, people dressed from head to toe in white as a culture, as a tradition, and they flooded onto the Copacabana Beach, which I didn't even know there was a beach called Copacabana. So they did a beach in Copacabana. Barry Manilow was probably there singing. <laughs> In London, the chimes of the clock inside the Big Ben Tower counted down the final seconds of 2012, and fireworks were over the Parliament Square, including the um, the River Times. Is that how you say it? Times. 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 Um, festivities were canceled in New Delhi, the Indian capital, amid the days of mourning and reflection about the woman's safety after a rape victim that died on Saturday. For those of you who don't know that, this is another tragedy I came into. <laughs> when I came back, uh, apparently gang rape is common in India and the police do not, uh, it's a corrupt, India is a very corrupt country and the police have not been reporting it and they actually think it's the women's fault for being raped. Mm -hmm. So apparently this one woman was on a bus, I think it was either a bus or a train with her boyfriend, but they'd just come back from watching a movie and six guys jumped them, raped her, and they had a, a metal rod that they shoved up inside of her. So obviously these guys were looking for trouble and they beat them, stripped them of their clothes, and tossed them from the bus. So, you know, my first heart is like, what was the bus driver doing? <laughs> Do you not know something's going on? But again, I'm not there in the whole thing, so my job, compassion. But anyway, so the woman died. She was um, in India, and then they flew her, they flew her to Singapore because she had a lot of internal injuries. I mean, that pipe just bust through so many of her organs. It was really graphic. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be graphic. I'm glad you ate already. And then um, they flew her to Singapore for, uh, because they are uh, nationally world renowned known for organ transplants, but she didn't make it. So um, India now is facing the idea of this is, this is not an uncommon thing. Apparently, a lot of women have been trying to come forward and confessing that they're being raped, especially gang raped, and it's not been addressed. So now, because of the internet, and it's worldwide, there's pressure on the country now. So that's a positive thing <coughs> of us being connected. We have compassion now. Well, something's going on here. And so the um, United Nations has stepped in, and there's now pressure on the country to do something. So there's a positive outlook on that one as well. So again, with the click of the button, you have all this information in hand. Just a click of the button. What I would think would be in this time, I just went out again. What, OK, what I would think would be in, in 2013, would be the idea that I wouldn't need a click of the button to feel compassion. I would be able to feel compassion with whoever stands in front of me. Because truly, whoever stands in front of me is like everyone else on the planet. So if I had the ability to feel compassion at all times, then that would be an elevation of my consciousness. That would make a contribution to the planet and assist in elevating humanity. Um, on our planet, since this is a sixth year, we'll see many injustices resolved this year. That's the idea, that six is the one that, it's like the healing number. It gets along with everyone, it brings the compassion together. And um, I know that they often talked about the year 2000 was supposed to lead us to a year of 1,000 years of peace, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so of course, you know, the Mayan calendar ended on the 21st, which I was in the meditative retreat, and, and when I went to bed that night, I said, okay, George, you know what the world is, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> And then, of course, I woke up and we're still alive. And so the Mayan calendar may have just been talking about a shift in consciousness. Yeah. Like maybe in 2013, our awareness is going to be so that we actually feel the consciousness and there's no need to fight. We, we can find compassion. And as I alluded to earlier, our oneness. We start feeling our oneness of one another and feel our connection rather than our diversity. Um, or needing to control. Suffering, George says, suffering is required to resolve an injustice so many so this may create more unrest and calamity than usual. And of course he said, Earth is seeking to restore its equilibrium, which is what's happening. The Earth is seeking to restore its equilibrium. Whatever, whatever stands in its way will be either shifted, replaced, or removed. Like that's how the Earth, the Earth, nature, doesn't take sides. If you're out in the desert and you don't have water, it doesn't save you because you're a good Christian. <laughs> you die. <laughs> so you have to follow the laws of nature. 
If nature has a species that is not making a contribution, the species is eliminated. That's the law of nature. It has no attachment. It just follows the law of nature. So the planet Earth will shift itself around and balance out the equal equilibrium. That's what it's looking for. Which I also find intriguing <coughs> because the word that the gentleman who spoke about when I was away was equanimous. Equanimous, which means balance. And that's what I was thinking that 2013 will bring. Balance. E equal, equanimous throughout the planet. Everyone will feel a sense of balance, perhaps. So the final thing that George said, our individual roles are to strive for inner harmony and resolution in this year, to bring peace and complete to any conflicts that we're having. Now, with that said, I'm afraid to touch things. Oh, look, it's right at noon. <laughs> I've got good timing. With that said, I was actually, since we talk about our individual roles are to strive for inner harmony and resolution this year, I thought I would give you a chance, if you wanted to, quickly just turn to somebody and talk about what your resolution, any conflict that you're currently having, that you would strive to bring to um, peace, balance for the year. So just have a quick <coughs> conversation, if you would. Well, I was thinking a lot this year. Um, well, this year, the whole 12 hours of it. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Apparently, I'm going to try to be more funny this year. <laughs> um, the idea of balance and equanimity and um, being aware it really appeals to me. Conflicts are always going to come and go, and the conflicts that I have, I have a tendency to not um, blow them out of proportion. It's just, okay, this is another conflict, and we'll get through it. And there's some challenges and changes that are going to be happening in Omega. So part of the challenge that I have is I don't have George to talk to anymore. Mm -hmm. So when something arises, I would always go, what, what do I do? And now it's, oh. So I find myself talking to myself a lot more, which probably is not most beneficial while I'm driving a car. <clears throat> anyway, so I feel like uh, the greatest challenge I've faced with this year is though George has not been in the room, uh, for three years. We were, we were talking about the last time he was in, Jay was actually here. George had snuck in the back of the room and Jay had said to me, oh, how's George doing? I've never met him, but I wanted to know how he is. And I said, well, why don't you turn around and ask him yourself? And he was surprised to see George here. So that was about three years ago, I'd say that George was last in the room. So even though he hasn't been in the room, I've kept him alive. And I, we refer to him often as well. And I have no desire to take that away, obviously not. But I do know that my energy needs to keep us going. So that's the next challenge, is to be able to continue on with the next phase of Omega, not lose George, but also to bring in my energy as well. Obviously, he chose me to continue this on. And I know that sounds so arrogant to say, and I do not mean that as arrogance. I want to, oh, I cry. I want to honor George for the choices that he made. And I feel tremendously honored to be in this position. Uh, I look at my life and think, how did I get here? And I'm so grateful that I got here. So I think on the, on the final note of your question, I would like to express a lot more gratitude. I don't think I express enough <coughs> gratitude to the people who keep Omega alive, because it's you, not me. It's you that keep us alive. I'm very happy to see that um, our January Omega 1, we start this Thursday, it's packed. We have over 30 people in the class. Right. The Omega 2 is closed. Wow. There's no more room in it. So we're scheduling out through the year. So I'm very, very happy to know that we're continuing on and that we're a part of that. And so if it wasn't for you, I, we wouldn't be here. Truly, we wouldn't be here. I look around, and Barb and Bob and Guy have been since the Stone Age here. And <laughs> Nadine has been around for quite some time as well. And then our newcomers, um, it's always beautiful to see the, the collection and the diversity of individuals that come here. And I also love the idea that it's nothing to join. Come and go as you please. The only desire we have is to keep the, the flame burning, to work what you learn, not just learn it, but work it, be it. So uh, if anything, I'd like to burn that a little bit more brightly as well. So I want to thank you all for showing up today and um, starting off our new tradition of New Year's Day <coughs> celebrations. May you all have a blessed and wonderful year to come. A strength to get you through <laughs> the trials and tribulations that you will most undoubtedly face and um, triumphs as well and may you have joy blessed in your life as well so thank you for being here we will see you I think our next time is uh, graduation on Sunday and then on Monday night workshop so thank you for being here everyone. Bye. Bye.